$75 from Adam P86. SGDQ, greetings from the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Runners, it may be midnight hours stateside, but it's prime time where I live. I'm always elated to see that the community I learned of back in 2003 grew to this scale, raising money for causes that are dearly needed. Now that I have a paying job, I can donate and support MSF during one of the first series I remember playing, Dark Forces. Best of luck with the run and the rest of the Star Wars block. This money is for the invisible bike in the Trials Fusion run. Emily donates $50 and says, Working while watching GDQ is how I want to spend all of my work weeks. Thank you to everyone who makes it possible. Doctors Without Borders deserve every cent. They do so much good in this world. Oh, and glitches are fun. Anonymous donates $25 and says, It's still Independence Day in Hawaii. Hal PLM donates $20 and says, Gotta donate in the Star Wars block. Remember, the animals aren't real, the frames are. Kyle209 donates $10 and says, Never got to actually catch one of these live. I can't speedrun games, but I'll be speed solving Rubik's Cubes while watching tonight in the same spirit. $10 to the Skyrim Glitch Exhibition. We just got a $150 donation from Strife, who says, At the last SGDQ, I didn't have enough money for a donation. Now I do. So take my money, runners. Warbutt3D donates $5. I know it's not a lot, but Games Done Quick puts in so much work, not only raising money for an incredible cause, but also justifying my insomnia by entertaining me all night. So I figured it was time to chip in. This is for the Skyrim Glitch Exposition, because nobody makes games as glitchy as Bethesda. He's perfectly right, too. Every little bit helps, even if you only got $5. It would be such a help to Doctors Without Borders. Here's a $100 donation from Ariel. A huge thanks to Psycho Ripper and The Couch for making this a very enjoyable run with excellent explanations for those of us who don't run Dark Forces. Great job, and please put this to runner's choice. Here's $10 from a donor named Do Your Homework Early, kids. Wish I could watch SGDQ live this year, but I'm busy trying to speedrun a draft of my dissertation about Star Wars. Looking forward to catching up on the runs later, but I still wanted to donate during the Star Wars block. May the RNG be with you. Good? Oh, sick. All right, here we go. Uh, so uh, timing is going to start when I do my first input, and so I'll let you guys know. Um, but first, I'm going to give a quick introduction. Hi, I'm Covert Muffin. This is Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. It's the last game in the Dark Forces slash uh, Jedi Knight series. And this game is very similar to Jedi Outcast in terms of movement mechanics, but there are some subtle differences that make it like ridiculously different. Also, uh, in this game, it's pretty hard to get lost. It's pretty linear. And so we come up with some really creative ways in order to be able to get around uh, this linear uh, fashion. Uh, OK. So why don't we go ahead and jump in? All right, are you ready? 
Timing starts in three, two, one, go. All right, so this first level is Yavin 1B, and we don't have any force powers yet. Um, so we start out with a lightsaber, because uh, somehow we made a lightsaber without any force powers. Um, and so instead of Kyle Katarn, we're actually playing his soon-to-be Padawan. Um, and so as I'm jumping through this level and finishing it off, um, I will be actually getting force power starting in the next level. And so once we actually unlock force jump, it's going to completely change. Um, that being said, though, there are whoops, uh, two major movement mechanics that are completely different from Outcast compared to Academy. Uh, the first one is going to be what I'm doing, which is known as elevation boosting. And this is jumping from a higher surface to a lower surface. If I jump on a surface of the same elevation or higher elevation, I actually will not uh, get a speed boost. So I always have to consistently be thinking about how to go from higher to lower ground. So it makes routing and stuff a little more complicated. Um, the second thing is now that we have force jump, uh, this is going to make uh, the game even more broken. And so as we go through the game, we're actually going to be leveling up Force Jump. Um, the reason why Force Jump is so broken is the first thing is it's going to allow us to clip out of bounds like you saw in the beginning of the level. Um, and then the second thing is that as we turn with Force Jump, we actually get a drastic amount of acceleration. In Jedi Outcasts, you don't really get too, too much acceleration from Force Turning, um, but it's uh, a way to maintain your speed as you're chaining together boosts. Uh, so up here is the last. Yes, all right. Um, so as we're sort of jumping through uh, this final uh, section of this training mission, uh, we will be entering our first set of side missions. And these are known as the tier one missions. In every single side mission, we get to select two weapons, a utility weapon and an advanced force power. So we can sort of pick our own force powers at our own convenience. Um, so here's a little bit of menu management. Whoops, there we go. And so here we're going to be picking up force heal and thermal detonators. And thermal detonators are going to be extremely important uh, in this level. And we're going to use them a good amount. Um, the reason is because Rodians have less hit points than uh, their human counterparts. Um, and so because of this, there's going to be certain enemies uh, in certain triggered zones where we can kill them with the splash damage of thermal detonators. And so I'm using audio cues with these thermal detonators, especially here where I'm using a visual cue. And I got him. Nice. Okay. And so now that I've killed off all of those enemies, I kill those. And here's the first trick. Oh, yes! The reverse door crouchy. Okay. That saves... Only about two seconds, but I like to pretend it saves a lot more than that. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so coming through here, another part is that in later levels, when we upgrade Force Jump, we will actually be able to chain together uh, crazier chains. But in the Tier 1 missions, it's a lot of just very short, uh, what we call wave jumping, and trying to catch small packets of elevation boosts like here. Uh, so coming up here is something known as the Greedo Speedo, where we're, where we're going to be wedging this Rodian into this elevator. And so there's a little bit of RNG where the Rodian can start moving instantly. Uh, I don't like this setup. All right, we're just going to ride the elevator to the top. That's okay. Um, and so what that would do is that would allow me to roll out of the elevator and just travel all the way down to this ground floor instead of going up. Um, to hit those tractor beams. Um, and so not getting that isn't a huge time loss. It only loses about five seconds or so. Um, but that's okay. So here we're killing off the humans with the lightsabers because they have um, more health. And then using the thermal detonators paired with some strafe movement in order to kill off the Rodians. Boom. Nailed it. Uh, so coming up here, we're going to be finishing off heal two. Um, just sort of as a safety, and then we're going to be picking up their, uh, debt packs. These debt packs are also going to allow us uh, to kill off a certain set of enemies at the end of the mission. Um, and so in this level, uh, this really shows off a lot of the elevation boost as we're moving through. Um, and this is sort of one of the most mechanistically difficult levels um, in every single sense. There's going to be a lot of really tricky elevation boosts, um, and especially here, where this is sort of the first broken portion of the game. Um, in this wall, this is called Canyon Climb, and uh, the programmers, for some reason, left in these undefined pixels that we can just sort of climb up. And because I know exactly where those pixels are, I can make that really difficult trick uh, look very easy. Um, but they can be very, very finicky as well. 
Um, and so now that I've climbed up this wall, we're going to descend to sort of the second portion of the level where I'm going to be climbing across the sand area in order to lay down these debt packs at spawn points of enemies where I know they will spawn. So here I'm just trying to find some random uh, elevation boosts, which I didn't find any. So here I'm using force pull in order to cancel the cooldown for being able to place a dead pack. And that's going to allow me to place those dead packs a little bit sooner, saving a few fractions of a second. So here is a trick where I'm going to use another primary force power, which is force speed, in order to slow down time. Oh, nailed it. Nice. Second try is really good for that. Um, and so that's going to allow me to be able to jump up the elevator. Whoops. Okay. This is not bad at all. I can just easy peasy climb up. Just like that, and boom, skipped another elevator. Um, so going through this last end portion, we're just going to come through here um, and kill some Jawas because Jawas. Um, and then we're going to travel through in order to find the droid that we are indeed looking for and finish out the mission. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa, that was weird. There's supposed to be an enemy there, but he didn't show up. Uh, and so when this droid actually hits this door, those six uh, sand people that spawn, I will kill instantly, and it ends the level. Uh, normally, we would have to drop down and try and kill like half of them and then kill the other half. Um, and it's really difficult and a lot of RNG that I just don't want to deal with. Um, so coming right into this next level, there's so much to explain. Um, what I'm using here is a command called vid restart. And what vid restart does is it basically is the same as uh, when we uh, change graphic settings. Um, and so when we do this, we can actually enter a cutscene. And because I've entered this cutscene, if you've ever played this game through casually, um, you notice that when I'm stepping on the sand, I'm not toggling these doom, death, and dying sandworms that just trigger all around me that can one-shot me. Um, and so this allows me to get a few parts. Um, however, there's also an alternative effect, not just uh, mitigating this RNG factor of the sandworms. Um, it allows me to go for the furthest part, as well as getting another part before that. And then over there, you can see me on the rock, and it's going to warp me where I should be at the end of the cutscene. However, boom, it saves my inventory, and I'm allowed to deposit that part. Um, and then continue through the level normally. Nice, that's a really difficult jump chain. Uh, so now that the worms are up, I'm going to use a little bit of AI manipulation in order to put the worms in place. So this is the first one. I'm going to jump on the sand right there. It's going to send the sandworm over there. Then I only have one part to go, and I want to start on this side. Boom, I brought the sandworm back over there. And so when I jump back to the ship, uh, the sandworm will be in a nice position where I know he can't kill me. Um, so last chain. Oh, nice. All right. And look at that. I was able to get to the ship. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. All right, so coming in here is Rail. And so the second force power that we picked up is known as Dark Rage. And Dark Rage has very interesting properties. The most important one here is that um, it keeps us from being able to go under one health. And so this sort of allows us to access certain areas of the game um, that the, the developers did not intend us to do, like jumping on this rail line. Um, and then this is, whoops, uh, going to be able to set us up to do a really crazy uh, jump sequence starting right here. And this is probably really difficult. Oh, yeah, let's try it again. Okay. Nice, okay, that's really good. Awesome. And I would like to say that Tier 1 missions are sort of relaxing. They ease you into the game. But they're some of the most mechanistically difficult, as shown by another ridiculous jump sequence here. Uh, because I only jumped on one person's head. That's known as the single dude boost. But you can actually jump on two people's heads and maintain getting elevation boosts and maintain perfect strafe turning to be able to contain your speed and continue through that entire jump chain to go really fast. Uh, but that was still really, really good. Um, so through here, uh, we have to destroy this bomb. If I didn't disarm that bomb, there's an instant death trigger that unfortunately Force Rage doesn't save me from. Um, so it's very interesting that the game has both uh, death triggers that will just always insta-kill you, um, whereas opposed some deal them in terms of damage. And so we'll see Force Rage uh, throughout the entire game. Um, so coming up here now, we've finished four side missions. We're going to be entering story missions, uh, starting with Hoth 
2. And the reason why we start on Hoth 2 instead of Hoth 1 uh, was because um, Hoth 1 actually kind of got lost by the game developers. We're not really sure where it went. Um, so right here on Hot 2, we're actually going to be mounting a Tauntaun, and vehicles in this game are ridiculously broken. Um, so just like with uh, strafe jumping, I can also maintain my speed by strafe jumping with the Tauntaun. And so this is going to allow me to use the speed boost that the Tauntaun has, and then also continue to maintain that speed all the way through, even after the boost depletes. Um, so coming through this cave, uh, you can actually get a Tauntaun in this cave. It's very comical, and it saves about five seconds. Um, but coming out of this cave is going to be another Tauntaun. However, we're going to do something a little more special with this Tauntaun. And we're going to glitch out this Tauntaun. Well, we're not really sure how this works, but the gist of it is walking off this cliff is going to knock me off. I'm not jumping off. It just straight up knocks me off. And then for some reason, this lowers the deceleration value of the Tauntaun. This means it slows down at a less rate. Um, so with this, as you can see, I'm sliding around very hard to control. I'm going to be able to boost up over this wall. Uh, just a bad setup. Let's try and correct this. Uh, no. Turning a little. There we go. Awesome. And so I'm able to pop myself up over an invisible wall. Um, getting that like third try is really, really good. Um, yeah. And so coming up here, we're going to close out the mission by bringing the Tauntaun in here, where a Tauntaun should never go. And we're going to enter into Hoth 3. So in Hoth 3, it's going to be wild, uh, widely just me walking through these hallways um, and shooting stormtroopers uh, in the knee. And so we like to call this Skyrim strats because whenever we shoot a stormtrooper in the knee, it's a one-hit kill, just like a headshot, uh, because apparently it's a vital organ. Um, so that being said, uh, this is a really great opportunity to read donations if you have any ready. We have a lot of donations ready here. We have $10 from Saza B 92 so Oh, Saza B. Hey, Muffin, take a bath and watch out for Gavin. <laughs> and I'd say it's the runner's choice for the animals, but I know you'd pick kill the animals because you're a Sith. So <laughs> kill the younglings. I mean the animals. Good luck with the rest of the run. Oh, thanks, Saza B. You can keep yelling. We have $100 from Travis and Jeanette. Hey, Muffin, while you climb the mountain of slain stormtroopers, remember N is for no survivors, it's okay if you start to sweat like a baker with a preheated oven, because <laughs> after you're done, you can just go take a bath. <laughs> Money to Gavin's choice of incentive, as long as the Skyrim glitch exit. Awesome, you have time for one more. One more. Mint Phoenix donates $30 and says, Go Covert Muffin. We're here cheering for you. This is a great event for a great cause. It's time to kill the frames and save the animals. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys so much. It means a lot to me. Uh, so coming up here, we're going to come to our first boss to close out the set of first story missions before entering Tier 2. Um, and we're going to use Force Rage for a different purpose here. Force Rage not only stops us from going under one health, but it also um, stops us from getting parried from other lightsabers. And this is actually extremely, extremely important because Alora here has a high parry value. And so that's going to make it really difficult. So there I was able to just chop through her saber and kill her really, really fast. That was a great fight. Um, and so I would like to explain what happens in Tier 2. But first, we have to talk about this level because this is insane. So the second vehicle is probably the most broken part of this game. I'm going to try and explain it. It's extremely complicated. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is I'm going to speed boost, turn really, really fast, um, and then jut myself sideways. And when I do this, uh, this is oh, going to allow me to... Uh, looks like my sensitivity is a little low. All right. It's going to allow me to go really, really fast. All right, let's try and just... And this is probably one of the hardest things to get consistent. Nice. That should be good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, nice. <laughs> awesome. That was great. Um, and so here we're going to pick up another bike. And so there, the reason why I was taking so long to do that is because we actually have to skip a cutscene. Because if we hit the cutscene, we can't get the second bike. Um, so with this, uh, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and climb the mountain, uh, Captain Kirk. Um, and so once we get up on this mountain, uh, this is actually going to save a ton of time because this is one of the longer levels even though the speeder bikes go really fast um, And the reason why I'm climbing this mountain so close to the spawn point is for some reason The developers made the end point and the start point of the level right next to each other All it is is just this ridiculously thin mountain 
uh, standing between it. So I'm going to chain together some really nice jump mechanics. Uh, that being said, um, in Tier 2, uh, we have unlocked the second level to all of our primary force abilities. So this is in go going to include force jump, force speed, force sense, force pull, and force push. Um, most useful, of course, is force uh, jump because it's going to change a whole bunch of acceleration values and allow us to spend more force uh, to be able to jump for longer and also build more speed. Um, so coming right up here in this level after we do some really cool jumps at the start, uh, you're going to really see a insane skip that is only possible because we have force jump level two. So here um, on this level, it's extremely important that I start thinking about force management. Uh, because I'm going to start running out of force really, really quickly. The first way I do this is I first change the thermal detonators. Uh, when I hold a weapon other than my lightsaber, I regenerate force while I do force jump. Uh, when you have the saber out for some reason, it doesn't want to do that. It's not cooperative. Uh, so I switch to thermal detonators. And so here's the crazy jump. Oh, nailed it first try. Oh, that's really good. Awesome. OK. And so here is going to be another use of Force Rage. I'm going to jump down here, use Force Rage to keep myself from dying from certain lethal fall damage, and we'll continue on with the level. Um, that being said, I also mentioned that Force Speed got a level up. And if you remember from uh, Surprise, that desert level with the sand people and Jawas, I use Force Speed to slow down time. And I'm going to use that here as well. However, Force Speed level 2 slows down time even more. So I'm going to wait for 100 Force here, and boom, I land at the switch, set up a quick save. And then let's see if I can get this. Oh, uh, no. All right. I'll try it a few more times. Oh, nailed it. OK, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, and so here, going into this portion, uh, we're going to really show off a lot of the movement, because uh, now we're going to hit all the homing beacons, but we're going to have to disable some bombs all around the level. So this is actually a great point in time to read another donation or two. We have $20 from R2JL. The crashed shuttle level in Jedi Academy gave me nightmares. Thanks for completely obliterating it. <laughs> Absolutely. Fate60 gives $10. Here's to hoping the comment gets rid out this year. Jedi Academy stole my teenage years from me. Here's a cheer for everybody who played in Tidal Luger mod. Kill Rosh and save the animals. Awesome. And you can read one more. One more. Tedwin gives $10. Super excited to see one of my friends at SGDQ. Sending you support from the UK. Oh, Hasht thanks, Ted. Hashtag best mod EU. <laughs> Great work, Jaden. Awesome. OK, so coming on this level, um, uh, a way the game devs try to stop us from doing ridiculous things is by setting up giant invisible walls. So this bridge is destroyed here, right? And the end of the level is clearly across this giant gaping chasm. However, because we have force jump two, we're going to just be able to, oh, just barely make it. Oh, awesome. <laughs> um, and that just skips us right to the end of the level. Um, so I'm also going to be intru introducing uh, pull cancellation, which is going to lower the cooldown of a weapon by force pulling. Uh, that's going to allow me to pack two really quick shots in. Um, and it ends the level really quickly. Awesome. Uh, so here for force powers in tier two, I pick up protect three, which is the most important thing, uh, because this is going to play a little bit of a role later on, on the first story mission, uh, which is going to happen after this last side mission for tier two. Um, in this level, we have our lightsaber and weapons confiscated. Uh, so all that menu management uh, before the level is completely pointless. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Raven. Uh, thanks, Mike Magician. Uh, but that's totally OK, because we picked up a single blaster rifle, which is per pretty much the first weapon you get in this game. Um, and it's going to lead me to victory, uh, thanks to Force Jump. So there's a really tricky jump that saves only about two seconds, because the elevator is literally directly next to it. Uh, but I'm just very comfortable with the crouch climb there, so it's no problem. Uh, and so coming up here, we're actually going to hit another boss. Um, and this boss is sort of gives uh, casual players nightmares because you don't have the lightsaber, because you don't have a sniper rifle, your other force powers. Um, however, because I have an ability called Force Sense, uh, when we see this blast rifle, it shoots sort of in a scatter pattern. Um, however, when I toggle Force Sense, 
it's going to allow me uh, to just completely have 100% accuracy. So by activating Force Protect to not get knocked back by his Stuker shots, and then also with Force Sense to have 100% accuracy, I am going to be able to completely mitigate any difficulty of this boss and finish him really fast. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so this is probably going to be one of the most intense levels on the speedrun. There's going to be a lot of crazy things. First thing is I will pull out the flechette, which is a shotgun weapon, and this is going to cause Kyle to force push me. I'm going to try and... Oh, I'm going to try and try this. Oh, excuse me, Kyle. Rude. Okay. There we go. And then it's going to boost me up. And here I'm doing what is known as preheating the oven um, in order to stop these guys from moving forward. And, oh, I baked a little bit of a batch there. Uh, where he just punches me down the ramp um, in order to bring me to victory. Um, and so if you're wondering why there are all these crazy uh, trick names, it's because they allowed me to name tricks uh, for some reason. I'm not sure why. <laughs> okay, so coming up here, uh, if you'll notice, I have exactly 100 health, um, and I'm going to have exactly 100 force. This is extremely important. So this weapon I have now is called the Stuger Concussion Rifle. What the Stuger Concussion Rifle does is it actually allows me to get a little bit of a knockback effect. And so pairing this, sorry, this is the hardest jump chain in the game. All right, I have to go for the backup. Nice, nailed it. Wow, I can't believe I got that first try. <laughs> nice, I got the backup there too. Awesome, okay, so the Stuger pushes me back. And so pairing this with force jump, um, and some other jump mechanics. Uh, this is going to allow me to do really crazy, uh, sort of semi out of bounds things uh, like this, where we're skipping like a one minute fight. Okay. Good first jump. Okay. Hang on, I'm just gonna adjust. So this is probably the hard, one of the hardest tricks to learn as a new member. So I'm not surprised I'm struggling. There we go, okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Awesome. So, like, in a speed run, um, usually I would absolutely get that 100% of the time first try. Um, and so there I'm just hitting Force Protect because I had an awkward dismount from the mount. That's totally okay. That's totally okay. Um, and so coming up here is probably going to be one of the shorter levels uh, for story missions. Um, and so in this level, we're going to be uh, just jumping through and doing a little bit of RNG um, with this first section. Um, this is sort of going to introduce and show off some Saber strats. So we picked up Strong Style, and if you played the multiplayer, uh, you're very familiar um, with how important Strong Style is. And so Vertical Red with the Strong Style is probably the most powerful attack. Um, I paired that with a few techniques uh, called Saber Wiggle, and also looking slightly upwards. And this is extremely, extremely important for packing as much damage as possible. And so this is going to play a role in the next level as well. And that's a really difficult jump that I made look ridiculously easy. Yeah, nailed it. Um, and so coming up here, the Suker can also push us forward. It can also push us downward. And so that's going to allow me to save like two seconds there, um, which is really, really nice little optimization. Whoops. So I missed this jump, so I'm just going to... Uh, where is this? Oh, this is fine. This is fine. I can, I can make this work. Uh, okay. I can totally make this work. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, and so traveling up this elevator, uh, we have time for one donation. We have $100 from Ariel again. The Star Wars runners are on a roll. Thanks Muffin for the awesome explanations of just how broken Jedi Academy is. Force yeah. turning is bringing back lots of memories. Put this towards runner's choice. Um, why don't we go to, uh, there was a Skyrim one? Was, or, I don't know. I'll, I'll look at him afterwards, sorry. Wait. Wait, what? How did I, what? I, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> How did I die? <laughs> that is amazing. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna quick save here. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I love marathons. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness. So in this level, um, this is gonna be sort of a sequence where I'm just gonna do a bunch of jumping through. Uh, and there's some important stuff to explain later on, but this is a great time for donations if you have more. I have a lot more. Awesome. We have $50 from Ghost Stalker. Great SGDQ stream. 
Amazing speedrunner and streamer. Thanks for all the energy, knowledge, and great running, Muffin. Also, the bathtub is full. <laughs> There's something here that I'm missing, I'm sure. Uh, so this is sort of an uh, inside joke where um, I was playing a competitive game. Um, and so as sort of an exclamative sentence, um, I was playing like a water style character as I uh, go through this section. Um, and so I started yelling after playing really well against these poor people. Um, Take a bath. Oh, God, one help. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I made it. <laughs> Sorry, this is very chaotic for me. Um, so that being said, uh, I just start yelling, take a bath, whenever I, as a victory phrase. Um, so coming up here, we're going to see Saber Strats uh, come to a full fruition by mixing in also four speed. Uh, we're going to try this. Oh, my goodness. Uh, this is awkward. Uh, this is really cool. This is a really cool room. Um, so, <laughs> oh my God. so here I'm using force pull cancellation in order to kill the robots uh, really, really quickly. Because after I kill off one set of robots, uh, the next spawn instantaneously. Um, also, I bet uh, Sujiki and the other people of the JK community are probably rolling their eyes greatly. Because so what happened there is I just forgot to set up a quick save, uh, and I just set up like five quick saves there, so I know it worked. Oh, bad RNG. Okay. Yeah, quick save. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, this is great. Take a bath. <laughs> so here, this is probably one of the hardest boss fights casually, but because I can just enter the cutscene, guess what? Four speed, roll, and saber up the butt. <laughs> All right, so now that we're in tier three, uh, we've unlocked force jump level three. So if you thought uh, force jump level two was completely broken, uh, I'm going to show off just how broken Stuker plus force jump three is um, in this next set of side missions. Uh, so right here, right now, uh, this is a new trick, new sort of minor adjustment to routing that I found. All right, I didn't get it, but uh, this is completely fine because I have a backup. Yeah, nice. All right, sweet. I made it. Nice. So uh, one, of, one of the more chaotic levels where you have to do crazy like fights with saber people and use force powers in multiple situations, uh, we can just jump over everything because of force jump level three and a couple of elevation boosts. Whereas tier one was a bunch of small force jumps with um, a bunch of elevation boosts. Uh, here with uh, force jump level three, it's sort of the opposite. Uh, but we still make use of force jump three. Uh, so here I'm completing absorb three, which is sort of the... Um, oh, butts button, because I don't want to swear. Um, and we're going to press that in case of dire need uh, in order to mitigate a lot of RNG elements. Uh, so here, once again, force jump three, totally fair. Um, so here, uh, what I'm trying to do is use the Stuker rifle. Nice, good quick save. Um, in order to save as much force as possible. It looks like I'm doing really well on force. So why don't we go ahead and do, nice, really difficult jump, um, and then go into this jump sequence. And so uh, I might show off force absorb here. It depends how kind these people are to me. Uh, but really the goal here is to just jump up these stairs and, oh, okay, we're, we're good. I'm really glad that was the most uneventful, boring, uh, jumping on staircases ever, because that is probably one of the most stressful portions of the run for me. Yeah, nailed it. Take a bath. Start. All right, so coming in here, uh, we're gonna go to Biss. I'm picking very specific weapons. The Stuker for movement, Rocket Launcher to kill things, and debt packs in order to mitigate enemy RNG, because it's a lot of tightly packed hallways uh, with lots and lots of enemies. Um, that being said, uh, this level is going to go on for a bit, so if you have more donations, feel free to read them here. We have a $100 donation from the Black Oops. Cat. Jedi Academy is one of my all-time favorite games, and it's great to finally see it at a GDQ. All the best to all the runners, and have fun. Oh, great. Thank you. 
$5 anonymous donation. Covert Muffin, your positivity is infectious. <laughs> Thanks for destroying a great game I've spent many hours dueling my friends in, and here's to that gimmick 100% run. Nice. Uh, you can keep going. Yep. Uh, $50 from Collision says, Overt donation for covert awesomeness. <laughs> $50 from Saito. Hey, Covert Muffin, greetings from Germany from your fellow speedrunner. Good luck with the run, and hopefully Boba Fett will be friendly. Nice to finally see this great game being run at a big speedrun event. May the force be with you. Awesome. Thanks, Edo. So coming up here, I moved through this level at a very specific pace. I'm jumping up here at a very specific time using a visual cue. Um, and the reason is because these TIE Fighters are on a timer. And so I'm trying to get a very specific pattern. So far, so good. All right, I got the one in the back, but I missed one of the... Uh-oh. Oh, good. I'm glad I didn't miss that. Awesome. Um, that allows me to kill the TIE Fighters off, hopefully very quickly, and that went that went pretty well. Could have saved about like three or four more seconds. Uh oh, losing health is not okay. Stop that. So here, using Force Protect because uh, fall damage, uh, and then using the rocket launcher here because it has a slightly higher fire rate uh, than the Stuka rifle. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so coming up next is going to be the final side mission of the game. It's Ord Mantal. And in this level, uh, we're going to go up against none other than Boba Fett. Um, and Boba Fett is um, your friendly neighborhood RNG troll. Um, and so in this run, uh, there isn't a too, too much RNG that can really get in our way. Uh, but with Boba Fett, uh, he cycles between one of three weapons. Um, and so it's totally okay if he picks a blaster rifle or a rocket launcher. Uh, but if he picks up the sniper rifle, then I have to do a really cool backup strat. So I hope he's absolutely horrible to me so I can show this really, really cool uh, strat um, that I just learned a few days ago, actually. Uh, that being said, uh, there's just lots of really beautiful movement. It's a very relaxing level. So if you have more donations, this is a perfect time to read them. We have plenty of donations. Awesome. We have $20 from the Naders. It says, Naders. Muffin, Team Disco Pancake for life. <laughs> Super proud of you, man. You make this game look easy peasy. $5 from MGS Fan 876 Hey, Covert, I'm so glad to see you on here streaming for such a fantastic game. Let us hope for the Boba RNG. $30 from Wino. Great to have this huge Star Wars block during an SGDQ. Good luck to Muffin and all the other runners. This money goes to killing the Rosh. Okay, <laughs> killing the Rosh. Okay. Uh, time for one more, one sorry. More. $10 from Firepun. Man, I love Jedi Academy. Great memories playing the online lightsaber battle with my friend Declan. Declan. I don't know. Who is currently watching it in the hospital with a broken leg. Let's oh. all get fired up for this run. Oh no, I hope you heal soon. That's. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Thank you for tuning in. This is really awesome. Uh, that being said, as we go to the Boba Troll, uh, my best friend ever, he didn't troll me. Wow. Get, get over here. Give me a hug. Oh, dude, that roll. Wow, do a barrel roll, everybody. Oh, my goodness. That was so epic. All right. Uh, so coming up now, we're going into the final four missions of this entire run. This has been a really great run. I've been having a ton of fun. Major shout-outs to the uh, JK speedrunning community. Sajiki, who's basically my speedrunning uh, coach and friend. He's also the world record holder in this game and going to be running this game at ESA. I'm super excited to watch that, man. Uh, congratulations, you've worked so hard at this. Uh, that being said, uh, coming up here, this is the longest level casually, uh, but because... I can just have force jump three. Um, I can make it one of the shortest levels in the entire speed run. You say, Covert Muffin, you, you're crazy. There's no bridge there. Well, guess what? Yes, there is. Take a bath. <laughs> oh, my goodness. OK, so coming in here, this is uh, Tasper 2. Uh, this can be one of the scary level levels. There's a pretty uh, tricky set of tricks up here. This is going to be one of them. This is going to skip about like a minute, like 30 seconds to a minute. Um, but if you have more donations, go ahead and read them. You have time for like one or two. Anonymous donates $5. Mm, a bath you must take. <laughs> Asenka donates $100. Hello from France. Hard to follow SGDQ this year. Too much work. But I'm with you guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much for the support. Um, 
That being said, so here um, I fell down there all the way just using protect and mitigate damage, but it's also important that I fall down really fast. If I hit the rocks, it makes it slightly difficult. So I'm jumping up at a very specific point in time to catch this block right here at a very specific cycle in the conveyor belt. Now that I'm coming through this holiday, uh, holiday, this hallway, yeah, troll me, give me the power. Uh, we're going to be able to mitigate the thunder thighs there. Uh, by jumping through easy peasy because I was able to plan out the cycle. Uh, so here I'm a little bit low on force, so I'm going to take this section here just a tiny bit more slowly. Um, and that being said, what I'm going to be doing is the light side ending because it's quicker with single saber. Oh, cool, I got a glitch. Uh, so that's a really cool glitch. Uh, I don't have time to explain it. Um, so here this is the hardest boss fight casually and also in the speed run. Oh, did I get it? Yeah, I got her. Okay, I saved that. Um, so there I had to hit a like a 0.1 to a 0.3 second window for action locking her so she didn't activate force speed at the same time I did. Um, so it's very, very difficult and very precise. But I have about eight to nine visual cues um, that I have to select from. So based on the patterns that she's giving me, I can anticipate it and use the correct uh, lightsaber mechanics. Um, woo, thank you. That was very kind of that person. I'll have to give them a high five later. Okay. Uh, so here, uh, this is also one of the longer levels casually because there's just so much lightsaber combat. Uh, but because I can throw my lightsaber through the floor and turn it off, for some reason, uh, this the hilt of the saber could still deal damage uh, to these chains. And so I'm going to line up at very specific points and then be able to kill those chains. Doing that in two throws is really, really impressive. Oh, that's really great. Um, and we're going to be zipping really fast into the final level. Um, so that being said, uh, I heard you like reverse door crouchy, so oh, we saved about two minutes from that, but really only about, we lost like half a second, but that's, that's okay. Um, so here's one of the crazier jumps with uh, force jump level three in the Stuker with pull cancellation. First try, that's really amazing, wow. And so coming up here are going to be the final two boss fights. These are going to go really fast, so get ready on time. Uh, it's going to be Tavion and then Tavion second form. Um, and so in here, I'm going to try and not have to use force speed for this fight. Hopefully she doesn't use one of the special abilities. Okay, I'm going to jump to mitigate that. Okay, and then I'll use... Okay, get ready. Get ready. Time. Nice, 37. Okay, sweet. Selfie at SGQ. Hi. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, thanks. Uh, do I have time to show off something really minor? Yeah? Okay. Um, let's see. How can I do this really, really quickly? Um, I think if I... What's the order? There we go. Okay. <laughs> so what I did here was I activated quick save... Um, quick load, and then I vid restart immediately. And for some reason, this doesn't allow the the uh, game to completely render all the pixels and stuff, so we get really crazy things. And so there's like a red box whenever she uses a special move. Um, and so we sort of joke about running this. Uh, where is she? There she is. And you can actually do every single level. And Oh, yeah, nailed it. But thank you guys so much. It was a real honor to be here. Take a bath. What you just saw was Star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, run by Covert Muffin. <laughs> Coming up next, we have Glassnonk playing Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, any percent. And after that, we have Studio and Shadex playing Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Blacklist, any percent. <laughs> we have some more donations that came in here. Anonymous donates $5. As an active player in the Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy multiplayer community, I was very excited and long anticipated seeing Jedi Academy at GDQ. I don't have much money, but I had to donate at least something to such a great cause. Also, could you count Rosh as an animal? Because if so, kill the animals. Best of luck on your run. He's right, every little bit counts. Kira Yagami14 donates $10. Hello, you're doing a good job so far, so keep going. Viva Star Wars.
Sarah20 donates $5. I introduced my boyfriend to SGDQ this year, and he was really inspired by such a terrific cause. I am a longtime watcher, first time donator, and decided it was time to change that. It's not much, but here is $5 towards saving the animals because we are both animal lovers. I love you, Derek. Vision donates $25. Thanks for an amazing run, Covert Muffin. One of my favorites so far, so I had to donate. Your commentary is incredibly enjoyable and even makes me want to try to run the game. Donation to Runner's Choice. <laughs> Nimander33 donates $50. Just had to donate during the Star Wars block. I have a lot of fond memories playing the X-Wing...